by the Montana Television Network. Montana This Morning continues on Montana's News Leader. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos says the publisher of the National Enquirer tried to blackmail him. Instead of giving in, Bezos is fighting back. I'm Mark Liverman with more on the explosive letter he posted online. Two concerts have been canceled after allegations of sexual harassment and bullying have come out about Bozeman Symphony Director. I'm at Babb and stay with us because I have the details coming up next. Good morning to you and happy Friday. It is 6.30 here. Missy O'Malley with Chet Lehman and Matt Ella will have a very chilly weekend forecast here in a minute. No spoiler alert there. <laughs> it's going to be cold. Our top story for you now, an extraordinary letter from the world's richest man. Amazon's Jeff Bezos says the publisher of National Enquirer tried to blackmail him. Instead of giving in, Bezos posted the threats online. CBS's Mark Liverman has the details. Amazon founder and Washington Post owner Jeff Bezos is accusing the publisher of the National Enquirer of extortion and blackmail. The world's richest man says American Media Incorporated threatened to publish intimate photographs of him and his mistress, Lauren Sanchez. Last month, the supermarket tabloid published their private texts and photos. Bezos started an investigation into how they obtained those exchanges, which apparently angered David Pecker, chairman of AMI. Bezos wrote, An AMI leader advised us that Mr. Pecker is apoplectic about our investigation. They said they had more of my text messages and photos that they would publish if we didn't stop our investigation. He also posted what he said is an email from an AMI lawyer demanding Bezos make a public statement that the Inquirer's coverage was not politically motivated. I was surprised that an attorney would put something like that on paper. Anytime that you are withholding information that could hurt somebody's reputation, I mean, that's extortion and that's not legal. Of course I don't want personal photos published, Bezos wrote, but I also won't participate in their well-known practice of blackmail, political favors, political attacks, and corruption. Last year, AMI admitted to paying hush money to women making allegations against President Trump. Bezos' investigators believe Sanchez's brother, who has ties to some Trump allies, may have been the one to leak the photos. Mark Liverman, CBS News. Now, investigative journalist Rowan, uh, Ronan Farrell posted on Twitter last night that he too received threats from AMI. He wrote, quote, I and at least one other prominent journalist involved in breaking stories about the National Enquirer's arrangement with Trump fielded similar stop digging or will ruin you blackmail efforts from AMI. I did not engage. I do not cut deals with subjects of ongoing reporting, end quote. Wow. There you go. Interesting story we'll there. We'll have to read about it in the Enquirer, oh, or maybe boy. not. <laughs> Much more to follow on that. <laughs> Matt joins us now, and he's been preparing us. The cold hasn't stopped, even though it's not as bad today. A little bit warmer today. It's balmy. It is. But it's yeah. still... We've got a 20, 25 degree swing in temperatures from this time yesterday to mm. now. We're going to talk more about that coming up. But look at these temperatures all the way above zero for most of the area. Uh, wind chill not as big of an issue either this morning. Uh, certainly the winds have uh, been on the lighter side. That won't be the case later today. A few light flurries possible later this afternoon. It looks like our temperatures will be into the teens as you head into the uh, day today. Another swing of colder air coming up in just a little bit. We'll talk about the timing of that in just a few minutes. Thank you, Matt. 633 now on this Friday. The conductor for the Bozeman Symphony being accused of inappropriate behavior, including bullying, sexual harassment. MTN's Medeiros Bab has more on these allegations and now the repercussions. Um, he spoke with a friend of mine who was an office employee at the time about how incredible my, my breasts were when he first met me. Um, that was when I was 17 years old. That is one of the 14 complaints being brought forward against orchestra director Matthew Savory in a letter to the board. Tragstad Burke says since she came forward, she has seen many more come to her claiming Savory has bullied, threatened, and sexually harassed them or people they know. After I sent this letter, I was called by several individuals who had experiences with him and with the board president, and they told me immediately that I needed to take steps to protect my pers personal and professional relationships because they would be targeted. We also know more serious allegations have been made to the board. Chair of the board, Stephen Stockman, says the board has started an investigation, and until it is complete, Savory will stay at his current position. We considered the allegations, Matthew's behavior, and uh, whether or not there was any safety risk to any of our employees by continuing to have Matthew conduct. 
We determined that there was not, in our opinion. I reached out to Savory, who said he could not comment further than he is fully cooperating with the investigation. In Bozeman, Medeiros Bab, MTN News. Now, Satchman says that the two performances at the Wilson that were supposed to take place this Friday and Saturday have been canceled due to the allegations. We did reach out to Savory, who said he could not comment other than he is fully cooperating with the investigation at this time. In other headlines, now that the Commissioner of Political Practices has dismissed claims that the city of Bozeman used taxpayer money to advocate for the passing of a public safety center, the city is asking the lawsuit be dropped altogether. City has asked the district court to not only dismiss the suit, but is asking for the court to make the man who filed the complaint, Roger Koopman, pay for the cost of the suit and the city's attorney fees. For every month of delay, the project cost uh, increases by $200,000. And the legislative session's bill, first bill to continue Medicaid expansion in Montana was introduced yesterday by the Democratic State Representative Mary Caffaro of Helena. House Bill 425, which would extend Medicaid expansion in its current form, the program provides government-funded health coverage to about 95,000 low-income adults in Montana, but it's set to expire in June. She says her bill's only significant changes to the program are more money for the workforce training program and obligating hospitals to pay about $15 million to help finance it. Republican State Representative Ed Buttrey of Great Falls is working on an alternative Medicaid bill that would likely include some restrictions on eligibility. When asked why majority Republicans at the legislature would accept her bill, instead of Buttrey's, she said the success of the program speaks for itself. When I get elected, I don't get elected to do this, put my hand, finger in the air and see what is politically and acceptable in the legislature. What I get elected to do is represent people. That's what we need to do, is talk about the wildly successful program, the status quo that we have today, and really the question becomes, why wouldn't Republicans support what we have? Now, the federal government covers 90% of those programs' costs, but the state must pick up the remainder. Staying with the legislature right now, firefighters in Montana are one step closer to getting a health and safety bill passed in this year's legislative session. The Senate committee passed the Firefighter Protection Act on Wednesday, meaning that the bill would move to the floor. It's something Montana firefighters have been fighting for for a long time. You know, people think, you know, well, it can't happen to me. Well... It did. Chuck Hagan spent nearly a quarter century fighting fires. He's been battling prostate cancer for the past year. It goes one through ten, and I was a seven, which ten is the worst, you know, real aggressive. Chuck isn't sure whether the danger he faced from exposure to smoke and other chemicals caused the cancer, but he now knows the chances of getting certain cancers are much higher in firefighters. In fact, his longtime boss at Lockwood Fire also had prostate cancer and did not survive. We didn't think about all the dangers, you know, smoke clear, let's get this stuff off and, you know, and now what I know now, I would have never done that. But I want to be super care uh, careful about it for myself and then also my coworkers, like we're all friends and family basically. Lindsay Lambert is relatively new to the job of firefighting. Equipment has improved and a lot of precautions are now taken to keep firefighters from being exposed to possible carcinogens, but there are still risks that come with the job. One reason why she and other firefighters from across the state are pushing for Senate Bill 160 to become law. That bill would shift some of the burden of proof for illnesses caused by fighting fires from patient to insurer. So Senate Bill 160 advances uh, 9-1. The bill now heads to the Senate floor. Cancer is awful in all aspects. It doesn't matter who gets cancer, but the fact that firefighters who've given their lives um, for this job are getting cancer because of the job and aren't getting the the health care maybe or the, the doctors that they need, the medical aid that they need, I think it would be super beneficial because, like I said, cancer is awful. In Billings, Russ Riesinger, MTN News. Now, several amendments were added, including one that would help protect insurance companies. No word yet when the bill would be heard on the Senate floor. Uh, also, the president of the Assiniboine and Gros Vent uh, tribes of the Fort Belknap Indian Reservation delivered Montana's State of the Tribal Nations address Thursday at the Capitol. Andrew Work Jr. entered the House chamber Thursday afternoon shortly after a drumming and singing ceremony by three Native American women. Work's speech touched on many subjects, including the importance of satellite voting sites 
on Montana's reservations and the record number of Native American legislatures at this year's session of the legislature. He also urged state, urged state lawmakers to approve the extension of Medicaid expansion, saying it has helped bring health coverage to more than 15,000 Native Americans across the state. But Work's overriding message was one of working together to tackle Montana's problems, helping vulnerable and improve the lives of all citizens. Beyond the boundaries of our reservations all across this great state, that is what binds us as Montanans. We can all acknowledge that limited resources and competing demands for those resources is a challenge. But when we accept and embrace that we are in this together, we see beyond the challenges and challenges turn into opportunities. Just as a reminder, by the way, Fort Belknap, Montana's fifth largest Indian reservation is located in north central Montana, just a little bit east and south of Haver. And here's an interesting statistic for you. More than one fifth of women in Congress are mothers to children under the age of 18. Coming up after a quick break, Natalie Brand takes a look at Moms in the House. But first, we're going to check in with Bianca Goladriga to see what's coming up at 7 on CBS This Morning. Good morning. Ahead on CBS This Morning, Amazon's Jeff Bezos accuses the National Enquirer of extortion and blackmail after last month's expose about his private life. Why he believes the article was politically motivated. Plus, Sunday night is Grammy night right here on CBS. 15-time winner and Grammy host Alicia Keys shares her inspiring message for young girls. We'll see you at 7.